Looks like we're live. Uh, Oily Prepper is having some issues logging on, uh, so she's rebooting. Uh, welcome to Lock and Load. It's our Monday hangout on Gun Channels. The first time also uh, on Steam It. Uh, this is Hawaii Volcano Squad, and we had a lot of Peruta news, uh, uh, Supreme Court news, and general insanity in the uh, stock market, crypto market, and generally everywhere in the world. So we'll cover it all like alcohol. Uh, <laughs> and so thanks, Jesse, for coming on. And um, so uh, let's see. The first thing is the Peruta. I woke up in the morning and uh, the Peruta appeal, after years of watching paint dry, was uh, the, the Supreme Court denied the uh, appeal to the Peruta case. Uh, and so that's the concealed case of California. I'll just do a quick screen link if I can find it. Um, jeepers. One of these pages. Let me figure out which page it's on. It's not there. So basically, I had been watching this case, and this is this is a basically a California case that um, oh, here it is. Uh, California concealed permit carry case that uh, the gun rights people had won in the Ninth Circuit on a three judge panel, and then they assembled an eleven judge panel who overturned it, and it they basically used some some argument, this crazy argument uh, based on Salon laws uh, to overturn uh, the decision. Salon's laws was, Salon was a, uh, uh, he was like a judge in ancient Greece pre, before the birth of Christ, you know, so um, uh, he was, arch, he, was an, it was, he was called an archon, actually. <laughs> an archon, if you remember the Star Trek episode, remember the return of the archons? Well, he was an archon in ancient Greece, which was like a judge. And basically they had banned armor, with the wearing of armor in Athens. And that's the, that's the law that they relied on to overturn. Basically the case had said that, uh, that was that the, the a judge in, uh, well, uh, no, the sheriff in uh, San Diego had denied permit uh, based on because he required there to be a good cause for you requiring a, a, a concealed carry permit, and that was basically you know the case. So there's no open carry it, it is in California, and they're denying concealed carry, and Supreme Court refused to hear the case. Um, obviously, Thomas and Gorsuch wrote a, a dissenting opinion on not hearing this case, but. Uh, so that was bad news waking up first thing in the morning. Um, let me get back and hit the screen share button to this article. Supreme Court Advice Review California. Can you see that? Uh, no, nope, there it goes. Now it's up. Supreme Court will not intervene in the lower court decision. The Second Amendment does not protect the right to carry a concealed weapon in public. So now, for anybody that listened to the uh, extraordinary uh, on the June twenty second, um, uh, every second matter is broadcast on gun channels of uh, uh, the, with the Florida Carry people, Sean and somebody else from Florida, Florida Carry, uh, and there they are. Uh, they got backing financial backing from the NRA to take uh, the Norman case to the Supreme Court and file an appeal for that. So that will happen in the next session, not this session of the Supreme Court. Uh, and so that that was the case in Florida where a black man was carrying a gun. And so happened he had a permit, but he got felony stopped. And uh, and it's a, well, there's a video of it on YouTube, you know, uh, felony stop, guns out, uh, you know, gunpoint, get on the ground. And he had a permit to carry a gun, but, you know, um, anyway, uh, so that, that'll be the next, you know, court case. It, he won, 
basically Florida Carey stepped in and, and it wasn't the NAACP who helped this this black man with the get it get uh, uh, you know legal representation and he won the case and then uh, Bloomberg got involved and started bitching and moaning and uh, you know, uh, they took it to the Supreme Court because um, it it was not not punishing uh, Mr. Norman would have resulted in de facto open carry in Florida. So I uh, went to the Supreme Court, you know, and uh, of Florida, and now the only appeal is uh, to the um, U.S. Supreme Court. So that'll be the next case trying to get open carry, you know, nationwide. And of course, we still have, you know, the Hearing Protection Act pending, the National Reciprocity Act pending in Congress, but hell, we have a lot of things pending in Congress, you know, and it, it, boy, talk about watching paint dry and then, you know, it's like you, when it finally dries, you, you look like you got the wrong color, <laughs> you know, so you have to start all over again and, and scrape the paint off after waiting like years for this fucker, for lack of a better word, uh, and um, anyway, so here's what Justice Clarence Thomas and Justice Neil Gorsuch said the court, why they should have accepted the case. Quote, the court's decision to deny certiorari uh, in this case reflects a distressing trend. The treatment of the Second Amendment as a disfavored right, Thomas wrote, adding, for those of us who work in marble halls guarded, guarded constantly by vigilant and dedicated police force, the guarantees of the Second Amendment might seem antiquated but the framers made a clear choice. They reserved to all Americans the right to bear arms for self-defense. I do not think we should stand idly by while a state denies its citizens that right, particularly when their very lives may depend on it." Unquote. You know, I, I guess that's, I agree with the minority. I don't understand why they couldn't get, you know, five people to see it their way, but, um, uh, out of the nine on the court, so all we can do, I think we just have to wait for one more liberal to resign or, you know, die of old age, and uh, I know that the MSNBC was, you know, even though this is this was like a big deal for us gun guys, MSNBC was all crying and bitching and moaning, and my own congresswoman, Hazy, Maisie Hirono or whatever went on, and and because they uh, the the Trump travel ban executive order was uh, the the injunction uh, against that executive order uh, was lifted by the Supreme Court, uh, at least in most part, uh, by uh, against the that was imposed by the Ninth and Fourth, you know, and so the Ninth got some egg on its face, uh, and you know they were using Trump's you know campaign speeches and tweets as evidence you know, of a religious, anti-religious, you know. Anyway, so they were, Maisie Hirono went on and said that the three, Alito, uh, Gorsuch, and Thomas were the three horsemen of the apocalypse. And <laughs> I was like, are you, we have these crazy politicians in Hawaii and they're so left wing, you know. It's just ridiculous anyway. So much for, so we, we're going to have to wait. Stop that one. On that one, um, and uh, but that was a real big deal uh, today, as far as uh, you know. I mean, the knife got egg on its face for the you know what they did, but the uh, um, you know I, I know I've been following the Peruta case since before I joined Gun Channel, so they're talking about three years. I read all the amicus briefs, and it made sense to me and. The Brady campaign's amicus brief, that Salon Laws thing from, you know, I don't know, several hundred years before the birth of Christ. I mean, that that was just in, like, sounded like some insane concept that a bunch of, you know, Brady campaign left-wing liberal lawyers were all in a room smoking pot, and they said, you know, that's all they could come up with, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, uh as far as that goes, uh, you know, man, it's just crazy. So other stuff that happened today was, uh, uh, for me, it was my first day that I got a payout on my cloud mining of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, uh, 
from uh, Genesis. And uh, so I'm kind of, it wasn't very much, but it was some Bitcoin and some Ether. And, uh, you know, so I just have to do nothing from now on. And, it, and it'll just keep adding, you know, more little fractions of a Bitcoin and fractions of an Ether into my account. And also from my Steam account, Steam it, I got my first like, you know, pennies, less like a little over penny worth of Steam. But all, all that, uh, all the cryptos took a hit this morning. I woke up also. The first thing was people on Steam complaining about a flash crash, but it wasn't just, it was stocks, the cryptos uh, took a crash, the gold, yeah, somebody said gold and silver just, you know, I mean, if you look at the chart, it was like straight down, uh, right at, I mean, it just gapped down right at after the open of the London market. Uh, and so, but I just did want to just share you guys, um, I don't know for who people who weren't watching the lobby last night. Um, if I can find it, yeah, here it is. So this is my like Genesis account. Uh, two terahash worth of hash rate worth of <laughs> paid for that much a uh, uh, a mining rate. Uh, you know, terahash sounds like something I would have done in in high school. You know, <laughs> sounds like an illegal drug, but. Uh, so um, basically, and that's Bitcoin mining and Ether mining. And it's basically a place set up in Reykjavik, Iceland. And it's not like an exchange or anything like that at all. It's just a, a mining contract. You can buy with buy like for 150 bucks, or if you get a 3% discount code, you know, 145.50 for like one terahertz. Anyway, so they put some money into my, uh, or not money, some Bitcoin. Basically, a balance of like you know, 0. 0.000735 added to, to my account and 0. 0.001751 of Ether. Uh, so I don't have very much. I'm just starting. To have, if you look at some of the other people's accounts who like show what they have on on YouTube, you know, uh, they have there's people with hundreds of, of bit rate. And basically, you buy it. And the, the, this is like a lifetime thing. And like, you'll just add a little bit of Bitcoin every day. And what it is, is there's a, it's buildings in Iceland full of uh, connected, uh, you know, uh, networks that are computers, just mining blockchain uh, technology. And I'll screen share some pictures if I can find where they are. Let's see. Um, yeah, there it is. There's one building full of just network computers. That's a lot of computers. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of computers. So yeah, so basically, you know, buy a contract and uh, with this company uh, uh, based out of Iceland, and uh, you know, you get Bitcoin, and uh, basically, it, it takes a year to get your what you paid for it back worth of Bitcoin, which isn't much, but if the base if if cryptocurrencies go through the roof then you know and it's like some crazy number bitcoin is worth a million dollars a coin then it'll be like you know <laughs> it'll be a very good investment you know but you know i threw a few hundred dollars at it whatever you know it's pretty much my attitude right now it's fun i get i, fi I finally get to do cryptocurrencies and i don't have to be on an exchange uh and the problem with doing exchanges like you know if you're in a state that allows it which i'm not um, then this isn't an exchange. This is just a mining contract. Uh, an exchange is like Coinbase, and they got like uh, I think a few months ago, or like in January, I forget when they got a notice from the IRS that the IRS wanted all the financial information, everybody's sales of all their all their customers, and every, uh, a, a log of every transaction. And Coinbase said, uh, no. <laughs> And we aren't going to give you that. So they, the House or the Senate is trying to push forward a bill. I don't think it's been codified into a law yet uh, to make basically make it so that you can't leave or enter the country unless you declare your cryptocurrencies. You know, so if you like, if you have, if you're taking on a cell phone, I mean. And, and really, basically, what all you would have to do is just delete your app and then reinstall it after you, you know, pass through customs. But they're going to do whatever they can do 
to detect if you have you're carrying cryptocurrencies on your laptop or your you know and on your cell phone uh, or you know, obviously they, they can, unless they cr crack your password code then they'll never be able to do anything with it but you know if you don't declare it or you lie on a declaration then that's you know so basically it hasn't been passed into law but the problem that they're going to have is that if, when they pass this law if they declare that okay they're going to say crypto they're going to say cryptocurrency they're going to say bitcoin is now money we're going to treat it as money well, then they just kind of fuck themselves because if cryptocurrency is money and let's say I spend five hundred dollars and uh, on this mine or let's say I go to an exchange like Coinbase and I buy I bought a Bitcoin for five hundred dollars and then three years in the future I sell it for a million dollars. If it's money, they can't there's no capital gains. But if they say it's a commodity, then they can hit you for capital gains, you know. So they have to say whether they're going to treat it as commodity or as money. And if they, if, you know, uh, if, 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 if there's no capital gains on it, then they will, it, it, basically this whole thing is like, well, only terrorists and bad people use and criminals use Bitcoin. It's like, uh, no, not really. You know, I'm not a terrorist or I don't do drugs. I don't sell drugs. I don't use drugs and I don't commit any crimes. And, you know, so it, it's just, you know, it's different. It, who knows what's going to happen? But uh, anyways, I got an affiliate code in my YouTube description, and it's on the YouTube thing. So if you ever start an account, you could get three percent off if you buy any hash power off of this company. But it's a, it's uh, just they have these huge mining, you know, buildings, and I guess electricity is cheap in Iceland, and it's they all they have to do is pump in cool air from outside because it's cold up there. So, I don't know. See, I guess they thought it was a good place to build this company. And, uh, hell, I can just sit back and I'm cloud mining Bitcoin. You know, it's like, welcome to the new paradigm, I guess. If, if who knows which way Bitcoin is going to go. It could go straight down and then I'm out a few hundred bucks or it could go straight up and I'll be like, you know. It'll. I'll build my. I'll take my Bitcoin and use it to build my jungle survivalist compound and our, you know, target range and helicopter pad and all that stuff out there in the jungle, <laughs> up on the volcano. But um, I'll even buy an aircraft carrier. How's that? If the Bitcoin goes up enough. But um, so I, I'm just basically not going to watch it for much. I'll just let it mine, you know, and. Um, you know, I'll be working on Second Amendment stuff, and you know, uh, I know G Webs has been selling his uh, card deck, uh, and he's still selling it. I think it's ending today. Uh, his uh, cards of the West—they look pretty cool. Um, it's a playing card deck with pictures of guns of the Old West. Uh, and so, if you're watching it, this on Steam, it. Um, uh, it's basically gun channels is like the Second Amendment. You know, like media platform, uh, <clears throat> they don't have any cryptocurrency or anything. It's just people that care about the Second Amendment, freedom, and all uh, stuff like that. Uh, anyway, but you know, we have there's people that have lots of different interests and talk talk, talk about different things. Patrick says he's going to be eight hours away from from where. He's on a plane. See if I could find my uh, stop sharing that particular picture. Um, let's see. I'm not sure where he said he's going. Well, it's not like he's going to Hawaii. If he's going to go see you. Well, yeah. If you're on the Big Island, look me up. I'll buy you a beer or a shot of something at uh, definitely at one of the local pubs. So out there, I see Patrick, Rupon, Cycle Camp, Too Hottie, and just James, of course. I also see him in here. So, <laughs> and what do we have in the external chat? We've got 
Stan, Faith of Balance, and Melody Acres. Yeah, and Oily is out there in the external, so I guess she just is having problems with a computer, and uh, she tried to reboot it and uh, getting in on the link somehow. Um, you're not seeing it live on Steamate yet? Uh, well, okay, my my Steamate account is in the video description. Um, Steamate.com slash at Volcano Squad. They didn't let me use Hawaii. Because it would have been too many letters if I added Hawaii in there. So, um, she oily says she rebooted. Oh, oh yeah, that was I was going to show. Um, Stan is talking about the market cap of of Steam. Um, I think so. I'm going to just share that real quick um, if I can find it. Once again, not completely organized. Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, this is pretty interesting. There's the one, they, they list all of the coins on this one website. Um, Coincap.io. Um, let's see if I can screen share it. Okay, here it is. So Bitcoin was down 3.7% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum, Ether down 11.9%. Uh, so that's a pretty major drop, but you can see the market cap of Bitcoin is 40 million. Um, uh, where is Steam? Steam is down here at number 16. The 16th. They, this these are sorted by market cap, and that is worth uh, one dollar and eighty cents per Steam coin. So. The one, the one that I was interested in was like number 60, Cloak Coin, down there. But they have some funny names here. Um, game Credits, Genosis. There's one called Shitcoin. But, but it's like, you know, really? Uh, I like Cloak Coin. Here it is. Cloak Coin is number 49 with a market cap of 50 million. I, have, I, don't, I don't own any of that yet. Um, but there's a bunch of interesting, I wish there was a gun coin, but, uh, there isn't, um, burst, mono, mono coin, super net, <laughs> gold coin, block net coin, you know, there's, so anyway, you can go to this website, uh, and check out, you know, where market cap of Bitcoin is, you know, how much it's worth of all the Bitcoin. Available supply is 16 million coins, 16.4 million coins. And the maximum amount that are going to print is uh, that they can't be more than 21 million. Uh, that's how the software works, 21 million. It's, that's it. They can't just keep making more. Uh, so, and anyway, that concludes that part of the thing. <laughs> Get out of the screen share again. Um, so yeah, but if you go to like Trayvon James's account on Steam or on YouTube, you know he's got a ton of videos and he's got like an incredible, insane amount of you know this stuff. I'm just like a newbie. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, So we were talking on before the chat started about, you know, what what would it be like if you if the shit hit the fan and you know would you go hunting? Would you hit the stores right away? Would everything disappear in five minutes? You know, or before you could get to the store, uh, you know, and you know buy just a bunch of you know whatever you needed, uh, food or toilet paper rolls. Or, um, and I was saying that I'm about. 100 yards from a Long's and a second save and about a quarter mile from a Walmart and Safeway. So I could get there really quick, you know, um, and load up. You know, it's just a question of will I have more than, you know, uh, three minutes to get to the store, you know, if the shit hits the fan. 
and will the banking system, you know, actually work? And uh, there are cards that are being, you know, made up so you could just buy stuff with Bitcoin, in which case, you know, the banking system goes down and, and but, uh, you know, uh, Visa is still up, it's just the banks don't work. But if you have like, a, you can buy stuff with Bitcoin and, and Ethereum with a Visa card, then, you know, you'll be the only one that can buy anything probably, you know. Uh, so it'll be just, basically what'll happen is if, if crypto goes through the roof, goes to the moon, then, you know, I'll be laughing <laughs> hysterically, you know, it just, I don't know, uh, you know, what's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. So, but it's, you know, like I said, I threw a few hundred bucks at it, whatever, you know, uh, think of it instead of a major ammo run, I, I did a box of bit mining, cloud, cloud mining bitcoins <laughs> and ether. So, and, and basically how it works is you can, uh, on Genesis, you can switch your allocations. If there, you can mine different coins. Uh, to a certain extent, they have a small selection of coins that could uh, Litecoin and a few Dash and a few other cryptocurrencies. So you don't have to just get Bitcoin either, but that's all I really want for now. Um, and if one coin has problems, you know, maybe everybody will switch to another coin. So anyway, um, but the problem with being on an exchange is if, is if you have a margin position you can get sold out very easily if there's a flash crash like happened today. Um, and so that's a really big problem. Uh, you know, margin is going to be a major issue for uh, these, this kind of a unregulated kind of a market uh, ex exchanges, but I'm not on an exchange. Um, exchanges aren't actually pretty legal in Hawaii unless they keep the aggregate amount of the value of all their cryptocurrency in cash in a vault somewhere which no ex crypto exchange will ever do. So, you know, they just basically said, get out. Hawaii said, get out, you know, to the exchanges. So, but uh, anyway, I just have a mining contract. I'm not on an exchange, so uh, it's whatever. Uh, and uh, and also they, they don't report, you know, the IRS is targeting Coinbase specifically and trying to get all the information and Coinbase is trying to you know, not give the IRS, you know, just blanket, you know, broad, you know, inf basically all the information that they have, you know, to the IRS. So anyway, I mean, it, it's, so it's, it's a new paradigm kind of a thing, you know, so we'll see what happens. I still like my gold and silver, but, um, uh, you know, so the, in between that and the, the steam it page and getting a, my first Steam payout, that was like most of the news that was fit to print here. I'm waiting on some uh, some prepping stuff that I got, some Kevlar tripwire, um, uh, and uh, what else? Uh, yes, my, num my number 10 cans of Mountain House <laughs> that I ordered from Amazon. Uh, and one thing I was trying to explain earlier is that like the NASDAQ went down a lot, you know, for a while too. The, during that whole crash. And, you know, one of the reasons is like the Amazon is basically what's driving it up, uh, the, the, the NASDAQ up or, or the, like the five basic core stocks. They're called FANGs, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, I think Netflix and Google. And I hope I got those right. But like Amazon has a price to earnings ratio of uh, over 186 to one. Last time I looked, I think it was last week I checked. So that means in a 186 price to earnings ratio, what you pay for the stock, you can make back in 186 years. You know, I figure with the mining contract, you know, it'll pay for itself in one year and then everything uh, after that is gravy, you know, and without, without the, you know, price of cryptos moving drastically one way or the other. I mean, if it turns out the cryptos are just going to be completely worse, worthless, then I just blew 100 few hundred bucks on nothing. So, but I've done that before, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, so, but if, you know, cryptos go through the roof, then, you know, I'll be sitting pretty. Um, and I put the, 
What were you going to say, Jesse? I'm going to be saying you can be sitting pretty and you can't buy a gun. Well, I already have so many guns. <laughs> Got four long guns and a dozen pistols or something like that. So, um, But nothing new. Well, yeah, but I already got everything that I really like. You know, I mean, I like a Gatling gun, but I can buy a gun. It's just that I don't want to – I'm waiting for the, you know, the laws to get a little friendlier here. You know, uh, I, I don't want to be on the Ratback list. I think that's a – they Hawaii passed the Ratback uh, list laws. If you want to buy a gun, you have to pay some amount of money to be put on this list, illegal list that violates the 1986 – Firearm Owners Protection Act, you know, but the state basically doesn't really give a crap. State of Hawaii, they'll they'll violate constitution, the federal gun laws. They'll violate anything, and and the state attorney general will say, oh, it's okay, because <laughs> the Democrats want to do it. I mean, like Amazing Hirano said, the Supreme Court justices were the were the you know the uh, uh, Alito, Gorsuch, and Thomas were the three horsemen of the apocalypse. And if, if they if the Republicans appoint another conservative justice, the they'll be the, they're just waiting for the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, you know. So it's that's the kind of mentality Hawaii politicians have, you know. Uh, and you know, it's uh, if you if you're if you're not in their left, if you don't agree with their left wing views, then you know, uh, you're evil. And I guess they're up, you know, allowed to shoot you or something, according to that left winger who went on a gun rampage, you know, and, sh and tried to assassinate the, the House, was the House Majority Whip? <sighs> Man. Take a look out at the comments real quick. So, I have plenty of guns and plenty of ammo, but yeah, more would be nice, but yeah, it's just, I don't particularly like what the, you know, uh, the police department wants to insist that I pay for I mean, if they want to put me on a list, they'll let them pay for it. The state of Hawaii is broke. You know, Illinois is, you know, definitely broke. And Hawaii is, like, right after them, you know. <laughs> uh, but there's no bankruptcy, bankruptcy protection for states. So um, it's just going to be one big mess. Um, let me see if I can make it back to gun channels over here. Ooh, that didn't work. Let's see. <laughs> when you have too much stuff up on Internet Explorer and it's, just, it's not happening. Hundred and ten, hundred nine millimeter howitzer. Who? Wait, do you have a hundred nine millimeter howitzer? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you cool. miss uh, typed my name. I was saying it would be kind of nice to have a hundred nine millimeter howitzer. Okay. Oh wait. <laughs> you put you added a nine onto the ten, or or oh, okay. Yeah, the Democrats aren't going to legislate us into safety, you know. I mean, you can't legislate against evil. People people who want to do evil things, there's no way to legislate against that, you know. And they found that out in Great Britain where you can't have a gun, but you could rent all the white vans and, and kitchen knives you want, you know. And you know, you obviously won't last long up against the the... British military doing that, but you can kill a hell of a lot of civilians and if you're a terrorist. And uh, so I think Britain needs to, I think all of Europe is in kind of has problems, but they think we have problems. They think we have out of control gun laws, and I'm saying they have an out of control government. You know? Uh, but I guess everybody runs into that problem at one point or another, uh, it seems. So, let me see if I can actually make it back.
what is that gun in your avatar there, Jesse? It is my FNX 45 Tactical. Cool, and you've got uh, some kind of light on the rail. Yeah, it's a um, Streamlight TL2, I think it is. TL2. Those are like 300 bucks or something off of Amazon or something like that, or more? No, uh, they're like two something, 250, 300. 250. Yeah, I don't have any lights on any of my guns. I'd have to go do like, you know, oh, I, I know what I was going to talk about too. Uh, reminds me, that reminds me of, because, you know, in Aliens, they, uh, when she goes down into the lair uh, and she, she, uses duct tape to tape a light onto her pulse rifle, <laughs> you know, um, because I guess ticks didn't teach her how to use the, uh, uh, the, the rail or whatever, or maybe the pulse rifle didn't have a rail, but <laughs> for, for light, but accessories, but, uh, the space core, the house, uh, armed services committee is going to, vote on whether or not to start a new division of the defense uh, establishment, you know, like in the Navy has is the Marine Corps is like a service under the Navy, you know, as part of the Navy sort of. And so they're going to have the, uh, a new division called the Space Corps. <laughs> they're, they're voting on whether to do that. A Space Corps, which would be under the Air Force. Uh, so Basically, there'd be a new Joint Chiefs of Staff for the Space Corps, and that just, when I first heard of that, it reminded me of Aliens, you know, uh, where they had the but they had Colonial Space Marines in that, and so but why can't I? So that the question is that everybody's asking, why do they need, you know, another branch with another layer of bureaucracy for you know space? And as far as I know, we don't have any colonies in space yet that we would need a military for. My biggest question is how they're even going to put them in space to begin with. Well, they'll pay SpaceX to do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, but I mean, who wouldn't volunteer if you're a kid and you want to join the military? I mean, you, want, you could join the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Space Corps. I mean, <laughs> if I was a kid, I'd want to sign up for the Space Corps, but I'm too old. They wouldn't. Of course, there's, you know. There's no air in space, so how, how can they have an air force in space? If there's no air, you know. But whatever, I digress. It basically the, it'd be a whole nother level of you know chiefs, you know, a whole nother level of bureaucracy added on top to all the bureaucracy we already have, you know. And uh, it's it's insane, but that doesn't mean the government won't do it, you know. <laughs> Who am I to who am I to tell the government what to do? I mean, I'm I'm cloud mining Bitcoin, so what do I know? You know, um, which may or may not be worth something in the future. Uh, yeah, but hey, it's cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, like all things, there's a little bit of a gamble with it. Sometimes it pays off. Yeah. You know uh, that that's that reminds me of the it reminds me of the John Wayne movie. I, I have a Blu-ray up. I saw the other day. Um, talked about a little uh, the Big Trail. It was one. Of, it was like John Wayne's first movie, uh, big movie role. And I mean, he had bit parts, but he was the star in this one. And it was his first time. And he was so young in this movie. You know, uh, and uh, it was Raoul Walsh's The Big Trail, and it was shot in seventy millimeter. And the problem was there was only uh, – Fox, uh, William Fox had planned to be able to buy, buy a lot of movie theaters that could project 70 millimeter, but it turned out because of the Great Depression that he couldn't. And so there were only two movie theaters in the country that could play it in 70 millimeter, <laughs> one in New York and one in Los Angeles. So it lost a ton of money. <laughs> and I don't know if they spent $2.5 million on it or something back in 1930. The 1920, they shot it in 1928, 29, and it's basically, I mean, great cinematography, but you know, they had sound was a brand new thing, and they had all kinds of problems with it uh, because they had a sound truck, it flipped over, 
in an action scene, you know, and, and uh, then Raul Walsh, they went to get a new truck, a sound truck, and driving it back, um, a jackrabbit jumped up and into the uh, windshield, wind, windshield of the sound truck, and they didn't have safety glass back then, so he was blinded, uh, basically, and he had to have one of his eyes removed. <laughs> that must have been a big jackrabbit. Well, if you don't have safety glass, uh, it just jumped up and they're going 50 miles an hour or 55 or whatever, or 60, you know, and uh, it's big enough to crack the, you know, I don't know how big deck that, hey, <laughs> I don't know how big it was. I wasn't there, but there are sound issues. If you, if you buy that, blue, I bought the Blu-ray DVD or I got the Blu-ray DVD and um, uh, as a gift actually, and uh, it was, it it, there's sound issues with the movie, um, and but it's a historical, historically significant movie. But it, it was John. One the one thing you'll notice that all the John Wayne movies, he's like an older guy with a gun and he's grumpy. In this one, he was a kid, basically, you know, twenty something, you know. And uh, but you have to be willing to deal with some of the sound problems because sound was new. They didn't have shotgun mics. The actors had to yell so the sound thing would pick them up and the recording. And it, it was, and some of the actors, just like Tyrone Power Sr., uh, basically they had John Wayne and the, the Fox executive said, well, we need to have some experienced actors because this kid is brand new and he won't know how to do anything or, you know, he'll need, he won't be able to carry the screen unless he has a strong supporting cast. So they got these Broadway actors from New York who had never, ever been in a film in their lives. John Wayne had been in films and bit parts and stuff, so he kind of knew what was up, and um, he carried a lot of it. I mean, he was good, but it's you have to be willing to put up with not being able to understand the dialogue of all the characters all the time, because they didn't know how to record audio back then, uh, and they didn't have dubbing. They couldn't dub anything in, and... Um, but they, they shot each scene in 70 millimeter and in 35 millimeter. So every scene had to be shot twice, at least more actually than twice. You can imagine doing that for every scene because they had, you know, and that doesn't count bad takes, but they had to shoot one for 70 millimeter, one for 35, and then one another shot for French, another shot for Italian, another shot for German, another shot for Castilian, Portuguese, Spanish, and possibly one for Portuguese. But anyway, it, it's... It's a, it's a great John Wayne movie if you, you know, can put up with the dialogue and not completely understanding it. I was grateful when we got to the Indians talking in, in like, Comanche or something, because I knew what they were trying to do without being, having to understand what the hell they were saying, because I didn't speak Comanche, but, you know, they have that in there. Um, ah, did, did anybody out there see the... Um, uh, that uh, AMC uh, thing, uh, show, a movie, called, a little mini series called The Sun. They just wrapped up that season. And I'm also enjoying Turn, the last season of Turn. You know what I noticed about fighting in the Revolutionary War watching Turn is that, you know, you've got a, if you got like two muskets or, or two revol two, you know, handguns and they're flintlocks, you have to be very deliberate and pick. Where you're going, who you're going to shoot and where very carefully because as soon as you've shot your shot, you immediately go to melee weapons right after that. You know, you'll be using your gun as a club after you fire because it takes too long to reload, you know. And if you're in a close quarters battle, you know, which they had a few of those in turn, and, you know, you fire one shot and then as soon as you that shot's over, you're done. You, you have to pick up a blunt instrument or bayonet and fight, you know, like that and so it just it it what i found is that yeah you could be deli you know people needed to be more deliberate like do i sh shoot now or should i wait you know a minute and then something a better target will come up you know and because it takes too long to reload in close quarters battle situation you know because you're going to get clubbed over the head or bayoneted if you just try and reload um and uh so hey I'm glad we don't have to deal with that, you know, because we've got blocks. But <laughs> well, not yet. Not yet what? 
Well, not yet. I mean, the way the uh, country's going, maybe they'll litigate us right back to that uh, same era. Yeah, we'll, have, we'll only be allowed to have black powder. <laughs> right, folks? Black powder, muskets, and uh, ball. Shot and ball. Uh, well, I don't have any problem with those. It just, yeah, it take, in a close quarters battle situation, you know, you have to be very deliberate if you have a loaded gun when you fire it because after you fire the shot, you're going to get clubbed to death, it, you know, if you don't have it. You know, and, and so, uh, by or bayoneted or something. So um, it's not like you have, say, if you don't have semi-automatic weapons, then you're just SOL. <laughs> and quite possibly in the future, if you don't have Bitcoin, you might be SOL. But, you know, who knows? <laughs> um, it was just, I found it interesting. I was in watching the recreations on Turn on AMC. Those are the two series that are, I've been watching. Uh, the Sun, which is like Texas Battle Nate. You know, I won't call it a battle. I more call it massacres and murders <laughs> on that show um, and along the Mexico border with Mexico and Texas, and um, it was like a Texas show. Where and it's shot in Texas. And in turn, I'm not sure where that was shot, but the, all the flintlocks and muskets and the, the handguns that you know you just shoot them once and then the instantly they become clubs because it takes too long to reload. <laughs> if you're, you know, in amongst the enemy or, you know, so, I mean, really, I just can't imagine only having one shot. And that would, that would kind of suck. You know, and, but, uh, but it does, it, it's like when, when you switch from like the bolt action to like, you know, an AK, it does, it does slow you down and make you a little more deliberate, you know, get your trigger pull smoother, you know, um, it, just it, slow down and you're more deliberate. And so you're more likely to hit something important, you know, uh, if you take your time and think before you just get all trigger happy. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got, you know, 30 round mag or 33 round mag, you know, or something like that, or 50 round mag, then you can just fire promiscuously all over the place. <laughs> and, and it won't, it won't, it won't, you know, it's not like you'll you fire one shot and then you're done, you know, and then you have to switch to a sword. But uh, anyway, take a look at the comments, see if anybody's saying anything else out there. Um, in, in the big trail, John Wayne mostly threatened people with knives. <laughs> he had a gun, he had a rifle and a handgun, but he never used them in the movie. He just used his knife. And when he was confronting like the three villains, you know, he used his knife for some reason. He was good. He he knew actually how to throw knives accurately. Just something I didn't know about him until I saw the big trail. See if I can make it back to gun channels. Yeah, I'm back. Let's see. Slush fun for a black project. Space Corps? Yeah, who knows? Well, if Congress approves it, it won't be a slush fund. It'll be another Department of the Defense, Defense Department. I Home. think you're saying it's uh, a whole section that money is going towards will actually be put on the Black part, uh, black Project. Just another excuse. Uh, well, you know, I like the uh, like $500 toilets. Well, I have no idea whether Space Corps makes any sense or not, but they'll they'll be voting on it in the House Armed Service Committee. Um, we'll see if it passes. I'm more interested in the Hunt, Hunt, Hearing Protection Act and the uh, reciprocity, but and I have some minor rooting interest in the health care. What happens with health care? But you know, that's like I, I'm so tired. I don't even listen to the news because I just don't want to hear the arguments that I know they're already going to make before I even turn or turn on. The channel, you know. Uh, Mike Helton, yeah, people do need to learn knife fighting. Um, I, you know, all I get to carry in Hawaii is my karambit, but I'm very good with it, and I hope I never need it. 
because I know I, how good I am with it, <laughs> you know? And uh, uh, it's, it's, I've been looking at other, uh, I've been looking at some of uh, the YouTube channels, like uh, there's this one guy in England, School Gladiatoria or something like that. And um, he doesn't like spadroons, but he likes rapiers. Uh, the, I, you know, we have a smart, we have, I still have to go find them. There's like a, about a mile in my house, a mile from my condo is a, a forged and fire, uh, champion, the one he, in Hawaii, uh, it's like, he's got a shop about a mile from my house. I have to go talk to him and see if he can make me a rapier or a spadroon or something. You know, uh, he had an interesting commentary on the, the sword fight in Rob Roy where it was a, 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 a saber against a, some kind of, some type of spadroon, you know, um, and uh, one thing that you can do with a saber, you know, if it has a nice big pummel hand guard is that you can, you know, hit somebody in the face with it <laughs> without actually running them through. Yeah. Uh, 15 inch Bowie knife is good. I like the small ones. I mean, that's what I practice with, you know, is my Fox knives, uh, Karambit and I has a practice knife, you know, uh, uh, a practice one, you know, that I could practice with that has, isn't sharp, you know, it's just for practicing. Um, and I like the, I really like, you have to practice for getting use of that. And, but I like fighting with that hooked shaped, um, you know, tiger claw shaped, uh, profile. Um, I have bigger knives. I, I, a rapier would be nice. A rapier is interesting. A rapier is just a stabbing weapon. It's, it doesn't have like a sharp, you know, edge or anything. It's just for running someone through with. And, um, and but they're very light and they're almost, uh, they might be the most effective, you know, fighting weapon, but people don't carry rapiers around because they're very long. They're the longest one, which is an advantage if you're in a knife fight or a sword fight. But, Okay, Oily, you have my permission to go to the bathroom. <laughs> in case, I'm just reading the YouTube external comments in case anybody's wondering. Ah. So, but yeah, it's like, I'll, I'll, I want to go meet that guy at the fort because he won the forged and fire thing around here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Fox Knives Karambit is only like uh, three and a half inches, I think, but it's good enough if you know how to use it. Um, and um, I, I think, yeah, training is obviously training. Whatever you use, training is everything, whether you use a firearm or a knife or a, or a club or a morning star. If you don't practice with it, you, know, you aren't going to be much good. Um, but... So I'm going to give my shout outs to Grizz270. To my knowledge, yeah, they, they, I've seen flamethrowers. There is no law against flamethrowers. Which if you, if there is a law to arson. So <laughs> be careful what you set on fire. And if you start a forest fire, you're going to be in a world of deep shit. So um, Mike Helton, Survival and Prepping. He's got very strong opinions if, I, if I'm associating his videos. Uh, about what the shit hit the fan will, will be like. It won't be pretty. It won't be, the apocalypse will not be a breeze through. I remember, <laughs> if you're the YouTuber I'm thinking of. Um, and Oily Pepper has her show every Thursday on her channel and um, she's also on um, Steam. I don't know if I'm alive on Steam now. I'll go look back later. I did a post, but you know, who knows. This is the first time I tried it. Um, and uh, so uh, I don't know if there's still time to get in on Gun Channel's uh, playing card deck of the Old West. Um, and uh, that's so I'm on I'm on gunchannels.com uh, slash HVS is where my particular dialogue is at. Uh, my little um, Second Amendment platform. All right, I'm not going to comment on whatever that means, Grizz. <laughs> Let's see. 
I'm going to be a little bit behind. Uh, so uh, if anybody is starting a Genesis account, I have a 3% discount code on my uh, in the video description. It's like an affiliate link. You know, um, I think they give me a small increase in terahash power if somebody uses my code. Basically, if you buy a terahash of Bitcoin mining, it, it would normally cost 150 bucks, and 3% off makes it $145.50. So whatever. But um, the code is in the video description on the YouTube video. So after this thing renders, if you're interested in that, you know, like I said, I don't know what it's going to do in the future. All I know is I'm stacking up Bitcoin and Ether for now. And, uh, I don't have to do anything after signing up for it. So, uh, and uh, I like I like the internet platform of Steam. Steam it. Uh, it doesn't cost anything, and they pay you for you know interacting, you know, posting stuff about whatever you want: guns, prepping. Uh, Precious metals, Bitcoin, anything you want to talk about or post, or you could just post pictures of your guns. There's some, I, there's some, there some pretty interesting guns I found on uh, Steemit. Uh, there's like a four barrel blunderbuss that looks freaking awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I would like to see somebody shoot a four barrel blunderbuss personally. Uh, but, um, Oh, and, and, and the Gatling cannon was interesting, too. <laughs> it wasn't a Gatling gun, it was a Gatling cannon. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, because you can't just drop in another cannonball, and you have to, you know, go in front of the cannon and unload it, you know, clean out. You have to cool down the barrel so the new powder you put in doesn't explode, so you stick in a wet rag to cool it down before you put in a new bit of black powder and ball. Uh, but I, I, I'm not an expert on that either, but anyway, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to make it back to gun channels. Yep. Uh, there I am. All right. So Patrick is, Patrick say he was in going to Hawaii or Michigan or something. I'm not sure where he is. Okay. I would be the one going to Michigan, but I don't know about Pat. Yeah, well, he said he's on his phone, and I'm not sure where he's going. <laughs> Maybe he can type it. No, he probably can't because he's only on his phone. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions out there. Uh, one last look on YouTube. I'll wait till Oily gets back from the bathroom. I don't know why she couldn't log on tonight. I'll be on her show on Thursday on Oily Prepper's Humble Home and uh, talking prepping and bug out bags. I think we're done with the bug out bags. Uh, so it'll be some prepping topic. Um, and I would really like for there to be a gun channel's number 10 can patch for number 10 can of Mountain House. <laughs> oh, Pat, Pat's going to Hawaii. Okay. Well, I hope he's, I hope he's on the big island. I'll buy him a beer. Got an Irish pub a block away from here, which can come in handy because I don't have to drive anywhere to go, go there. I can just walk. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so thanks everybody for checking out uh, this week's lock and load. Um, and uh, check out gunchannels.com. It's free to join. Uh, that if you're on Steemit and you're into guns, check out gun channels. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. There's a lot of gun people on there, um, are, and you can keep up on Second Amendment stuff. You know, uh, pretty good. And Steemit has has a small firearms community, and hopefully, I'd ho like for it to grow bigger. Um, my link for Steemit is on the bottom of the video description too. So check check out my stuff on there for extra posts that you don't see on the YouTube page or on gun channels sometimes. Um, and, uh, you know, just get out there and post your gun stuff because people like that. Anyway, so I guess we're going to wrap this show up. Any other shout outs you want to do, Jesse? Nope. I'm not much of a shout out person. Not much of a shout out person. All right. Let's see if I can find YouTube. Oh, this week is going to be gardening. 
I've never watched Independence USA. I, I don't know what that show is. What is that on a cable channel or? I like watching gardening videos of people's gardens because I'm just so jealous. <laughs> it's like somebody having a gun that you want, you know. I, yeah, oily head link problems from the Google link. The blaze, blaze. I don't know what the blaze is. What's the blaze? Is that it? <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna wrap this up and uh, see y'all next week. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh, it's on Dish. All right. All right. Well, you can tell me about it on your chat on Thursdays. All right. So we'll all see you next week. Uh, if Edge was here, he'd say, fight the good fight. Keep your, keep your groups tight. And uh, that's all I'll say at farm. All right. Aloha, baby. Where is the... There it is. Well, that's not it.